Hello and welcome to Mediumship Matters with me, Hannah McIntyre. How are you doing? Oh, I know, I'm spoiling you. Two podcasts in two days. What are you going to do with yourselves? I actually have a moment to be able to record things and think things and be here with you all, which makes a lovely change. A lovely change. So I wanted to carry on. I know I've, I was talking to you guys about AI and um, that scary video that was made of me that was defrauding somebody, but the plot thickens. So I can't remember if I mentioned to you that I've been listening to some different podcasts. I've been listening to, I was trying actually to have a break from spiritual podcasts because the thing is, you know I love spirituality and mediumship, but then you get all kind of tied up in what is original, what is what somebody else has said, and I don't know. So I decided to have a break, and I was listening to a Black Box that my sister recommended to me, and Who Trolled Amber, um, which are both great listens, highly recommend if you're looking for a podcast that has nothing to do with spirituality, but very interesting. <laughs> But in that way that everything always snowballs and melds together, it has ended up teaching me some stuff about spirituality and mediumship, which I have found really fascinating. And this, where we're at with, again, business and being a medium but having a business and where the line is and all of that I mean I've had four people I think abuse me online this week for charging for my book <laughs> and uh, I you know I do a lot of accessible things to make things available to people that don't have the money but want to follow a spiritual path like this podcast, for example. Um, so I think that's just, it's very interesting. And I've been trying not to reply to people because spirit keep reminding me it's pointless. It's a waste of my energy. But I do want to go back to them and say, where are you volunteering? Where are you giving your time for free? And can you tell me where I can get free food and board from for me and my family so that I don't need to earn any money? Anyway, interesting. So you know that I was talking to you guys before about um, the mass-produced mediumship readings and how I'm just not entirely sure that they are fully ethical. So just to catch you up, if you haven't heard this before, I there's many mediums that I know of that talk about doing individual readings is presented as if you're getting a reading just for you but when you delve a bit deeper you realize that they have recorded for example 10 different videos and you randomly get assigned a video when you apply for a reading and what's interesting about that is of course because they're doing one video that can be watched multiple times um, they can charge less for it but they can also advertise more which means that they can get in front of more people which means they have more followers so us mediums that are trying to do the ethical work and trying to be true and not misrepresent our mediumship are by default stymied by the very system and the way that it presents because if you are doing one video and you're charging people £30 for a reading and you're able to send that video out to 30,000 people, you've made a lot of money with very little work because of the automation. And I was discussing, I believe, on this podcast whether, you know, how responsible sitters need to be in that, how aware people need to be in that. Well, I don't know if you guys have seen Psychic Samira on your uh, social media, but she's been coming up a lot on mine and um, it, it didn't really resonate with me. It's a very pretty young girl with pink hair, didn't really think anything of it. And then the other day I saw a post that said something ridiculous and I can't remember how many it was, but say, for example, 
it said 10,000 positive reviews. Now, as somebody who does do readings and does do events, I can tell you it's probably one in 10 that actually bother to leave you a review. In book sales wise, it's probably one in uh, 100 that leave you a review. Podcast downloads, it's one in every <clears throat> 15,000 downloads that leave me a review. So we understand that. And I understand that because people are always asking me for bloody reviews. Sometimes they're asking for reviews before things have even turned up. And I'm like, just get lost. Stop being at me. Everybody's always at us all the time, aren't they? Wanting something. So I understand it. I completely get that. Anyway, I thought, well, 10,000 reviews, that's pretty cool. And then I thought, well, how is this even possible? How is it possible that this young girl has done enough readings? How could she physically do enough readings? And then I thought, oh, great. Is she doing what all of these bloody bastarding, I'd say slightly fraudulent mediums are doing and misrepresenting and giving multiple readings to the same people just again and again and again? And um, yeah, I mean, it's fascinating, isn't it? Just across the board how we're presenting things. I can't remember if I mentioned this to you, but I once had a reading from somebody that's got um, many, multiple Oracle card decks, and I paid for a reading that was supposed to be personalised, and all they sent was two cards out of their Oracle decks with the meanings that they've got written in the book that come with it, and that was it. It was like 40 quid. But also, what do you expect for 40 quid when you've got a celebrity medium, you know, and back and forth and back and forth. Anyway, back to psychic Samara, 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 Sam you say Samara, I say Samara, tomato, tomato. So I'm looking and all of her website and everything has got her on it, her on it, her on it. And I'm like, but it can't be her. She can't physically be doing that many readings and I go through their terms and conditions and on page 12 of her terms and conditions or something ridiculous I've been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling it says that they use AI to make the readings and so that is even crazier to me so this is not even that someone has channeled a message once and is then using that message for multiple people which before you come for me I do obviously do when I do my free card readings posts I had somebody on that <laughs> who sent me an email a message afterwards so it, it was really weird because it was talking about letting go of the past and moving into an, a new future and blah -de blah blah and they replied with, your reading is completely wrong. I'm a multimillionaire. I haven't even got money problems. And I was like, well, number one, the reading didn't mention money problems. You've decided that's what that is. And number two, if you're a multimillionaire, why in God's green earth are you looking for a freebie? Pay for a proper bloody reading. Anyway, that was kind of interesting. I will stay on topic or maybe I won't. You're used to it by now. Let's just go around my brain and all the different avenues so for example chris riley video messages we know that they you can tell by his trust pilot reviews that he sends the same video up to multiple people there is a girl on there where in one of the reviews where she and her two friends all got separate readings and they all got the same one sent to them so we know that's how he's doing that but at least he's recorded the video and done a channeled message because psychic samara samara isn't even doing that it's ai it's nothing to do with spirit and i guess i'm naive because i shouldn't be shocked by this but i kind of am um I'm kind of shocked and saddened and surprised but not surprised, I guess, that this is, is happening and we are all, and people are, you know, thousands of people are signing up for that. 
And I guess you could say, how does it hurt if it's providing hope and help to people? How is it damaging? Is it bad? But I don't know. It just leaves me feeling really uncomfortable. And again, ties into the crumbling that I was talking about before. Is this the whole industry falling apart? And if it is the whole industry falling apart, is that for the rebuild? Or is it because we shouldn't be playing in this space? Spirit actually don't want this anymore or don't need this anymore or we've gone past our time I don't know I don't know I find it when I believed at the beginning that we were moving to a new age where everybody would live in this utopia and that's where we were heading when that was the spiritual teaching that was given to me time and time again It was at least hopeful because now we just seem to be moving further away from spirit than we've ever been. And even people who are working in this industry seem to be moving away from spirit further than they've ever been. And I've had some interesting experiences with people who I thought were friends recently, where they're almost trying to put me down. And because I'm very open about my dreams and what I would like to do with my mediumship and where I would like to take it, it's almost like they're trying to, well, there's a bit of judgment there. I've had a bit of judgment recently. and. I am. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by it all. I am fascinated by people deciding there is only one way to do the spirit work, and that is the way we must stick to. And not being like, okay, well, you want to do it your way. That's great. I want to do it this way. That's great. Why can't we both be right? Why is it your way doesn't resonate with me, so it must be wrong? You must be in your ego. You must be greedy you must be that why can't it just be okay you do it your way I'll do it my way how interesting and within that we have the people who are doing the work behaving like that and being very ego driven and then we have people booking readings with an AI and getting an AI reading and paying for that and leaving good reviews for it And I just wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder how much is spirit design and how much is human design. I wonder how much they're letting us get on with it so that we will learn because of our free will and choices and how much is actually part of spirit's master plan for the crumbling and the rebuild, hopefully a rebuild. I hope there's a rebuild of spirituality. I hope I get to see the rebuild. I mean, I know I get to see it because even if I'm dead, I'll get to see it. But have we not been crumbling for just forever? (laughs) I'm so tired of crumbling. Surely we can get into a new space. And then and yet there are still things being built that aren't. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to warn you all because it is a quagmire out there. And I think what is happening with so many people is that they are setting up their spiritual businesses and feeling disheartened when it's not going the way that it should be. But let's be honest, if you are reusing readings and charging for them, or you are using AI and charging for it, you've got a huge amount of capacity compared to someone like me or you, who's actually doing the reading and spending the time on it. Have you heard that Miley Cyrus noise? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? That's how I feel at the moment. It's 
I'm kind of disassociating, I think, because every day there's some new drama or new unfoldment where I go, oh, my God. And I guess this takes us back to what Debs Kylie was saying when I interviewed her all that time ago about this industry needing to be regulated. Because it's only because spirit were telling me that I needed to keep going through the terms and conditions of Psychic Samara that I did. Otherwise, I'd have given up. They were boring. I hadn't found anything mentioning AI and I was quite a long way through it. But there it was, absolutely. So I guess the, the girl whose picture is on everything is just an actor or maybe an AI generated image because these days <laughs> even the pictures you see are not necessarily real. The future is, I thought it would be more like the Jetsons, the future, you know, we'd all be flying around, illness and starvation would have been eradicated, there'd be clean water for all, the air would be pollution free, and we would all be wearing some sort of lycra jumpsuit with, yeah, and actually what the future is like is control, fake news, coerciveness, AI, but maybe that's going to bring us all closer to spirit because maybe we're all going to suddenly get so turned off by what isn't true and real that we will go looking for a deeper truth and in that deeper truth we will find spirit. Is that not what happened to all of us on this journey? You know, your loved ones died. You felt like they were still with you. You went to look for them. You found spirit. You hit rock bottom. You were wondering what the point of life is. You cried out to the universe for something, anything, and you found spirit. Isn't that how it happens for most of us? And so maybe this is that mass awakening that was mentioned, God, 15 years ago. <laughs> maybe, maybe it is part of that. And this is the thing. I believe that everything serves a purpose. When I heard Lillianne say on that live all those years ago, um, your, your energy, your shares build an energy to the spirit world. If you want your loved ones to come through, you need to share this live. And I couldn't believe, I thought I'd misheard and rewound it and heard it again. Um, and I said to Spirit, why are you letting her do this? Why are you letting her audience grow? But then there were so many people in that period of time that started with her and watched it for a bit and went from thinking it was really cool to being like, oh, hang on. Is that the best that Spirit have got? Is that the best you can do evidentially? And started looking and then found other things. That's how I got a lot of my followers. So who am I to say that she isn't serving a purpose? Who am I to say that Psychic Samara's fake AI readings are not doing a purpose? Maybe, maybe they are the master plan. But it's kind of weird, isn't it? Hmm. So I've been thinking a lot about that recently and I'd love I'd love your thoughts on on where it's where where we're heading where it's at what it's all for I still feel like nothing is wasted and we have to just trust the universe is always working in our favor always and it's so hard to be seen in amongst all of that noise but just keeping true and speaking the truth and being real in a sea of automation and AI and fakery, you have to just keep being real and hope it, hope for it. Uh, some of you may have seen, and if not, do check it out. Tyler Henry has um, taken an incredibly brave leap to do live readings for celebrities on Netflix. Now, the on only the first one has been released. Um, and I have to say it was chaos. <laughs> God bless him. Um, I was really excited because obviously we know that all of all of the TV shows he's done previously have been edited. We know that. So it's absolutely fantastic that he is 
taking this brave, indelible leap to being, to showing what true mediumship looks like. But um, I'm hoping the second one will be, he'll have a bit more control. I don't know if it was nerves for the first one. It was very hard to follow um, and a very different style of mediumship to the mediumship that I like, which is, you know, I've got enough evidence so that you place it, you check all the evidence and then you stay with that spirit. Whereas he was kind of working with several different spirits at once and um, saying to, you know, five people, I think it was, who can take a man that lost someone when they were young who can and and someone would answer and he'd go well I'm with that's that's for you then and then someone else would take something else he'd go that's for you then so there wasn't an awful lot of verification but it was the first one but I think that is an incredible pushback energetically to this AI and fakery which is only going to help the rest of us because the ongoing problem that I face time and time and time and time and time and time again is people's expectations of how mediumship works because it's been so misrepresented. And this, uh, I think we've made a rod for our own backs, to be honest, because somehow... And I'm not even sure how. I watch old videos on YouTube of Tony Stockwell, Derek Acora, and um, Colin Fry. Thank you. Um, and they are good. Don't get me wrong. They are good. But they are, it's true representations of mediumship. And you know it's the highlights that I don't think there's any of the full shows that I've managed to find yet. They're the good readings. They're the ones they wanted out there. Completely get that. But they aren't never getting anything wrong like Colin Fry in one of them he does a spirit link and he's talking about a little boy and it turns out to be a little girl and that's you know perfectly normal we get things wrong we misinterpret we miss things we make mistakes but I think people are I don't know where this idea has come from and I think this idea has come from the fraudulent stuff where they have these expectations where they're expecting it to be just beyond the realms of capability oh, like that lady that said to me that time well everything you've said right but tell me his name and I'll tell you if you're with me and I was just like kill me now just I'll go into the spirit world immediately let me leave in sitting born at that difficult dam I did the other day I had a um baby that came through and I was Doing the baby, I got good evidence, found the recipient, everything was taken, um, even managed to talk about a tattoo that they've got in memory of them. It was really, you know, good stuff. And I went up to them in the interval and I just, because I always like to check with a mother um, when a baby comes through that they're okay if I can. And I just went up to see if they were okay. And they were disappointed in the reading and they were disappointed because I hadn't mentioned that that baby was a twin and they felt like that baby, the first thing that baby would do is acknowledge their twin. And um, that was a really interesting thing because yet again, we're back to if spirit could control what I am able to receive, there is no doubt that they would have acknowledged their twin, their surviving twin. There's no doubt that they would have said, here's my twin, how's my twin, I'm with my twin, anything like that. There's absolutely, of course they would. Just like if you were driving to see a dem and you said to your loved ones in spirit, can you, can you say five, six, seven, eight through the medium? I would say five, six, seven, eight. Because... There's no doubt that spirit would do that if they could. But I obviously am a human being and I wasn't open to the piece of information of it, of her being a twin. She mentioned siblings, but she didn't mention, well, but I, I didn't manage to perceive twins. I could only perceive being with siblings and that wasn't enough for them. And I'm, okay with that because 
I understand how mediumship works. But when we've got mediumship being so misrepresented out there, I don't think the majority of people do. I don't think they really understand what is happening. So we've got, it's just such a, ah, oh, I'm loving um, experiencing it all. We've got the AI that is not working with spirit at all. It's just a computer generating messages. And that is blowing people's minds. The reviews are phenomenal. Then you've got little old me trying my best to actually go into an altered state and communicate with spirit and give the best messages that I can. And people being a little bit disappointed because it isn't what they expected or how they wanted it. And I know that is also the difference between evidential and... Um, inspirational so of course and I say this to students all the time when you when you first start working with spirit and you're doing spirit guides and stuff with the best will in the world you can get away with a slightly more generic message because where if you were to say things like it's been a really really difficult time it's been so much heartache and sadness but you're ready now for the next phase you've changed you've transformed you've moved forward for the majority of people they could take that message if you were to say to somebody um I've got someone in spirit who stands beside you. It's a male figure and they would have a connection with an S or a T somewhere in their name or someone close to the, them. You would all be able to take that because, or the majority of you would. And so there are these kind of easier messages that sound specific, but they're not really specific in the delivery, which is another form of fraudulence, if you want my opinion. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's this kind of idea that spirit are speaking to me and giving me everything and I should just be able to reel it off like a factual list. So again, I'm still interested with seeing what is going to happen uh, to spirituality as an industry, um, not just the religious side of it with spiritualism, but spirituality as a whole. Where are we heading? What are we doing? How's it going? And it's hard. And it's it's not a journey for the faint of heart. And in all of us with our spiritual businesses, no matter how much we believe in law of attraction or not, or how much we believe that spirit will bring us the right people, there's a lot of noise in the industry now. So you do need to be allowing an advertising budget. You do need to be uh, not taking it so personally to be able when your head doesn't get above the parapet because there is so much noise. There are so many spiritual podcasts coming out there. And that's great because we need different perspectives. We need people to talk. We need people to share. But if you're starting a spiritual podcast and you're not getting very many listens, that's understandable. I'm lucky. I got just ahead of that curve, I think. Just ahead. Only just. Um, whereas now there are so many new ones starting, so many people doing it, that it will be hard to be seen because the market is getting flooded. And here's the crazy thing. The market is getting flooded with readers who aren't even reading. The market is getting flooded with AI, with people doing um, repeating videos that are used. So how can we compete with that? What can we do? And we have to just keep trying and keep pushing forward and dare I say it not put all of our financial eggs in our new mediumship business and expect it to to cover our incomes in the same way it used to because there is just so many people and I think for us to a certain extent we have to wait for some of these things to fall away and we have to wait for voices that actually talk about how it really works and can understand the theory of mediumship and why it works the way it does and how it works the way it does and have done the integration as well as doing the development work to start speaking up and be heard so that people can start to understand how it really works, not how they think it works, not how it's presented on TV. I mean, I went to see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice on Friday night. And in that, you know, th the 
well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. I better not say it. But we all know that in it, the um, Winona Ryder's character is a medium. We all know that. She always has been. So um, the way that, you know, spirit interactions manifest for her. And it was making me laugh. And it was, you know, it was fun. It was a fun film. I, I wouldn't bother going to see it at the cinema if you haven't already. It's not It's not that great. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but... Uh, It'd be good for a Sunday afternoon on TV. But in that, again, the misrepresentation of how it works. And I have to say, at least in um, We Don't Talk About Bruno Encanto, Bruno misinterprets what he sees when he sees the future. He just sees a bit and doesn't know what to do with it and kind of runs away. Whereas in in you know in the general idea and the way it's spoken if you can't differentiate between a, a human and a spirit we're a bit screwed and if people have that expectation of that from my mediumship what am i supposed to do how am i how am i supposed to work like that because logically if i can see spirit then there should be no mistakes they can just write on a piece of spiritual paper all the answers so again we're back to all of that and the the burden of proof and the burden of expectation in amongst a industry now which is flooded and congested with mediums who do work with spirit but it's not quite going the way that they want to and they're getting jealous like some of the teachers that I had who were jealous of me and they're being bitter and nasty and holding their students back. I had an email from someone the other day saying, I'm sick of teachers that don't actually want their students to succeed. And I was like, God, you sound like me on my development journey. I hear you. So we've got people having that. Then we've got people who aren't even working with spirit, who aren't even people. They're computers doing readings and this marketplace of noise. If you look at the most followed mediums in the UK, the most followed mediums in the UK are unethical ones. They are ones misrepresenting the work. What are we supposed to do with that? I don't know. I guess we have to pass it over to spirit and just hope for the best. But I just wanted to talk about this because I know that some of my dear spirit buddies, people in the same boat of me have been messaging me just going, ah, and all I've been able to do is message them back and go and I thought well what about you guys are out there that don't have my whatsapp number and aren't whatsapping me just know you're not on your own it is kind of overwhelming it's so there's so much going on out there and for a lot of us I think we just need to ride the wave and wait for gentler times when we're not bobbing around in the ocean trying to hold on. And so if things aren't going quite the way you're expecting them to, it's not that spirit don't want you on the team. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. This is like any industry now. Over Overworked, overrun, being milked for every single penny that it can pre provide. And then when that finally dies down, we'll see what's left. Anyway. Don't know if this was interesting or not. Always the wonder. I hope it was. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. And I will catch up with you again soon. Lots of love.